Hello. Hello. Oh, hi. How are you? Hi. How may I help you? Uh, well, we emailed. Remember? Um, it's Alice. Uh, Alice. I was. Alice. Uh, I just bring you money today. Oh, come on in, my American friend. Come in. Come in. Come in. Oh. How are you today? I What's up everybody? Welcome back to the Shemi Show. Shemi Cash here, of course. Today we're at Lake Madrakan on the outskirts of Padilla. Uh, the far end of what they call the dark side. I thought I'd bring out my drone since I haven't used it this whole trip. It's just been in my bag just itching. So I want to make sure it still works first after crashing a few uh, propeller blades off of it and ordering some replacements. So uh, I'll be on the Ninja 400 here. Very cool bike. Let me check it out. Turn, turn, turn. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. There we go. So this was my other rental, the Kawasaki Ninja 400. I traded in the uh, the GPX 180 Raptor, the Street Fighter bike, and got this one. It's a little more pricey, but it's a lot more fun. Even though 400 cc's is not really a, in America, in Thailand, it's good because most things on the road here are like 100, 125, 150 cc. So I just want to make sure my drone still works basically. So we're going to do a little follow along on this little bike for car parking path here alongside uh, Lake Mabrakan. Very nice lake and this is not too far away from the racetrack Bira Circuit for you guys that don't know. So this is about, um, you're pushing about 25 to 30 minutes away from Padilla Beach I'd say pretty far in the outskirts so just want to make sure this thing flies before the rain falls because it is the rainy season after all so you know let me hop on the bike and see how she goes all right I'm hoping the drone still flies too hey what's up it's me guys so welcome back to Thailand good morning and we have the aftermath of a very rainy weekend it's uh, green pool season here <laughs> that pool's been green as fuck like all week so i haven't been able to mess with it there's been a lot of flooding lately but i wanted to point out a few things here because this marks the beginning or near the beginning of my last month here in thailand for now i'll be going for a little over three months and some change now and normally every year i go for four months so let me go and talk about a few things in here let's flip this camera around Come on, flip, one, two, three, one, two, three. There, got it. That's the DJI Osmo. Push, tap it three times and it flips around. Come over here with me to the closet. I'm gonna show you guys something this way. All right, so for starters, let me say that usually I spend about $2,000 a month in Thailand in past previous years. This year is different. This year I'm recovering a lot of debts and expenses and I haven't spent anywhere near that amount, not even close. I'm going to show you everything that I've purchased here on this trip so far here. Let's go in the closet thing here. One, two, I've purchased a total of one collared shirt and two t-shirts the whole time I've been here. I got another, another Porsche shirt, which was 250 baht, I believe. They used to be 200. If you follow the show from like three years ago, I bought one. I had to buy another one. And I bought a bootleg polo shirt for another 200 baht, which was of poor quality. You could tell by the collaring, you know, and the tag and stuff. But, you know, for like four or five bucks, what do you expect? And just some two, two extra workout shirts. So that's pretty much about the only money I've spent here other than on toiletries and cleaning supplies. That's it. Remember, I don't drink. I got a girlfriend. I'm not spending money on whores. I spent money on the motorcycle. I've had two motorcycle rentals and some track time, but for the most part, I've been socking away my money to go and fix my problems back in the States. And again, I have a car in the shop, bike in the shop, shipping stuff, stuff like that back and forth. So this trip has been really good for me to uh, just pretty much bank money. I wanted to show you guys that it is possible and I'm doing it right. So you don't have to have a lot of money to come to Thailand. It depends on what your vices or addictions or goals and trips or whatever are but i'm just telling you how it is how i've used this trip as a way to leverage my expenses and uh kind of come ahead of the curve at least for i like i like to say at least i get to hop off the treadmill for four months out of the year for uh, one third of the year some people never get to hop off that treadmill so that's that so yeah so other than that little bit of money expenditure i'm doing all right here 
Let's see, what else do I spend money on here? Ah, yeah, weed. I gotta go buy weed at least once a week, but that's 200 baht, like five bucks. And the cigars are actually 180, get two packs a week, 360. The cigars actually cost almost about the same or as much as the weed. So unless you want to factor in my $10 weekly smoking expense and buying a little gas for the motorcycle here and there and my street, since I don't cook at home here also, my street food comes to about 150 bots per day for a lunch and a dinner. So that's not much. That's uh, 150 times two. We're talking like $5 a day for food here. Yeah. So that's pretty much my expenses. So if you're able to live like that, well, I'm pretty happy like that at least. I was able to sock up some money, pay off some of my stuff, and get my stuff taken care of. So that's how I've used this trip. You know, Thailand is what you make it, people. It is what you make it, or any country is what you make it. But I just realized you can't get in over your head with the uh, the debt or it's crushing. So, yeah, so more on that today. I'm going to talk about that today. Let me go and sit this on top of the fridge because it's a much better tripod. All right, right back. Okay, so we're back in the kitchen. Yay. <laughs> what I call a kitchen, at least. I forgot to mention my other expenses, my plants, of course. I spent a lot of money on my plants, probably about $160 for everything here. But I got a lot of fucking plants. So plants are one of my vices and I like taking care of them. It's just what I do. So <laughs> anyway, yeah, keeping my expenses low, I was able to pretty much get a lot of my stuff in check and handle things were going out of control prior to me coming here. If you guys followed the previous shows where I was in Vegas, fighting off the rent monster, <laughs> as most of you are doing. It is a terrible, terrible treadmill to be on. Uh, the debt slavery, I just, you know, after six months of it, I couldn't fuck with it, man. It's too, it was too difficult on my my body, my car, my bike, my everything was just, uh, you know, needles in the red, man. So I'm grateful that I'm, I at least have this place and I'm able to hop off of the debt slavery treadmill for four months out of the year. Soon to be more, but I believe that is about the maximum I could stay here per year. I think it might actually be extended to six months per year starting in October 1st this year. But uh, as far as visa extensions and stuff like that, I just got back from Cambodia a couple days ago. And at the border crossing there, you're only allowed to go across uh, the land border crossing two times per calendar year. And I've already gone once. So I'll pretty much be up out of here in 30 days or so or something to that effect. So. Anyway, though, I'm grateful that I was able to get my expenses in check. I'm making this show basically to tell you guys that you might be in a similar predicament in America, right? You know, your checking and saving account might be on E. It might be on low battery, all that good stuff. If you are somehow able to fly to this country or any other country where your expenses are much lower and you don't get hit over the head with the rent, it's, it's a great way to actually recuperate and recover. Even if you don't work for yourself, even if you don't, you know, work at home like me or whatever, if you're just able to get that ticket and get up out of there, um, you don't have the revolving debt burden of, well, paid my rent 30 days, T minus 30 days till the next apocalypse kind of thing going on. So we are not machines, we're not robots, me especially, and I'm, I'm just not built for that shit. So it's like, that's something to consider. Yeah, I, I, I would say to everyone, it's much better for you to take a break, take a vacation, take a trip before your soul is crushed and your body breaks down and you're unable to work, you know, because that's ultimately what t tends to happen to a lot of people. So it happened to me, you know, I thought I'm super nigger, you know, so it, 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 it is what it is, man. You, 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 there's only 24 hours in a day and you could only work 24 of those. <laughs> I've tried to do more. It's just not possible. So... Yeah, that's all I got to say, man. Uh, I don't mean to drag the show on any longer than necessary, absolutely. But uh, do do uh, watch my old shows where I talk about this stuff, right? This and, and again, my ideas might seem very foreign and unorthodox to many of you that have never lived outside of the country. You've never left America or UK or Canada or wherever you're from, and you don't know what it's like on the other side, you know? And you've heard stories, you watch the news, you hear these things, you hear people... YouTubing and podcasting like me, but you don't really know until you go for yourself. So my only bit of advice, if you don't already have a passport and it's current, then at least go ahead and fix that shit. If you don't even know the process of doing that, you probably need a birth certificate and things like that, and you should go ahead and take care of that. It's a small expense to have, and it's just good to have. You never know when you might need to go get up out of the frying pan. Now I'll be back in the frying pan in America before I know it. Before I know it, you know, so I'll be back hustling, grinding, working, shooting my movies, uploading videos, 
running jobs here, there, and there, and whatever, because there's a debt slavery cycle. But I'm figuring this time around that I, I, I'm not going to go and uh, just give all my money to rent as I've done previously. Uh, that's definitely a recipe for failure and a recipe for self-destruction that I don't think I could follow. So. I've got to go my own method or my own route, which is how I got here in the first place. And again, it might seem like a weirdo to a lot of you people or whatever, but that's okay with me. It's totally okay with me, you know. So I'm living my life this way and I'm not saying that everyone could, could or even should do what I'm doing. I'm not even saying that I'm right, but it works for me. So I hope that you guys can find a plan to be happy and, uh, you know, keep your life in order and rolling or whatever. I'm Shimmy Cash signing out. You guys know how to look me up if you want to support me, buy my movies and all that good stuff. And I'm going to hit the work on my own computer here and get to work and upload some more movies and drop some more videos because it's what I do. All right? You guys take care and ciao. I'm out of there. So, hey, it's me again. I realize that a lot of you guys who watch this channel do not have your own YouTube channels. Most people, in fact, they're only used to manicuring their own personal social medias, you know, their own Facebook or their own Instagram page and stuff like that. But they don't really make specific videos for sale or for profit, right? So that's what I do. That's where I come in. That's what me being a webmaster and a producer is all about. If I'm not behind the camera shooting my own original content, you guys can buy on my sites, look up Shimmy Cash, of course. Uh, I spend most of my time doing uh, promotional stuff. Like, I'll show you more or less my day in the life, whatever. So, if I'm not here rolling another cigar blunt, I am at the workstation there. So, let's see what I'm working on right now. So, you guys can get a picture of how I spend my day as a webmaster and what I do for a living. All right. So, if I'm not working out or mopping the floors or smoking a joint, I'm taking care of the plants. And... As you can see, I'm editing another video on screen right now. It's another Indian Girls promo clip. And I got a couple laptops going on, wireless keyboard, table, exercise ball, notepad. And I spend most of my day here at this little workstation, chilling in my little garden, as I, as I call it or whatever. But that's what it's like to work from home. Yeah, I think it's raining out there right now. Ah, the rain has stopped and the pool is not clean. But yeah. That's more or less a day in the life. You know, I sit at this station for a couple hours a day, edit videos, upload them for promo, get on my little notepad and uh, do what I do. So yeah, that's how I spend my day. It's the work at home studio for now. <laughs> I only need a couple square feet. You guys think it's more to it than that? I am the Wizard of Oz. All right.